نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد I welcome all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, sons and daughters and their respected listeners in uh, Australia, mainly in Brisbane and Sydney, Melbourne and Perth and the surrounding area as well. And whoever may be tuning to these classes, I hope and I ask Allah uh, to preserve you all and that you are all in a good health. And uh, may Allah protect us all from the trials and tribulations. We continue in the this night of the ninth of the Jumad al Ula of the year 1442 of the Hijra, the uh, 22nd of December, but in Australia it's the 23rd already of the year 2020. We'll continue with Idnillahi Ta'ala. In this uh, class, it's going to be in the class number uh, nine, inshallah ta'ala, from the explanation of the creed of Imam Barbahari by the noble Sheikh Al Allama Salah ibn Fuzan, Al Fuzan, Hafidullah, from his book Ithaf al Qari, with ta'liqat ala sharh al Sunnah of Imam Barbahari. We still uh, doing the Point, we're going to finish the point number five according to the English translation, but in the Arabic is number four, which is, May Allah have mercy upon you, Imam Barbahari says, May Allah have mercy upon you, you should know that the religion is what came from Allah, the blessed and most high. It is not something left to the intellect and opinions of man. Knowledge of it is what comes from Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So do not follow anything based upon your desires, and so deviate away from the religion and leave Islam. Uh, until here, we, alhamdulillah, we, we covered this in a previous class. And then uh, we're going to start from here. He says, there will be no excuse for you since Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained the Sunnah to his Ummah and made it clear to his companions, and they are the jama'ah, and they are the main body of Ahlul al adam and the main body is the truth and its followers. So, he who contradicts the companions of Allah's Messenger وسلم, in any of the affairs of the religion, then he has fallen into disbelief. Has fallen into disbelief, the Sheikh is going to explain that. What does it mean later on? In the explanation, the Sheikh Saleh says, The religion, all of it, came to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of it. He's the one who has legislated this religion, this religion subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? That was the beginning when we started. Alhamdulillah, I just wanted to remind you of that. That the entire religion is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all what is upon us is to adhere, to learn, take knowledge from its proper sources, at, gain the correct understanding of as-salaf as-salih, that which the companions they were upon, and then put it to practice and act in accordance to that, not in accordance to what your tribe is upon, what your family is upon, what your big sheikh is upon even though they oppose the Sunnah as it is practiced by some ignorant Muslims, they say now they just have to do whatever their tribe is upon, and what their country is upon, what their sheikh is upon. Rather, you have to adhere to what the Prophet ﷺ was upon and live the companions upon. So the Prophet ﷺ, uh, has explained everything as he came, as Imam Barbahari says. He said, there is no excuse 
for someone to deviate away from the religion, from the truth, since the Prophet ﷺ has made everything clear for his ummah and for his companions. So therefore, Sheikh Salah al Bodani says there is no excuse for anyone to oppose the Sunnah, oppose the way of the companions, and therefore follow his desires. Because this person now has been misguided after guidance has been made clear for such person. Being misguided after knowledge. Knowledge is available, but that person, instead of following knowledge, he chooses to follow his desires. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al Jathiyah, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهُهُ هَوَاهُ عَدَ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى عِلْمُ Didn't you see the one who take his own desire as his own ilah, his own God? And Allah has caused him to go astray upon knowledge. So this person here, he's not ignorant. He knows. He knows the Quran, the Sunnah. He knows the statements of the people of knowledge, scholars. But since it does not agree with his desires, he put them behind his back and take only what ago and agreed with his desires. He said, this is a clear misguidance we seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sheikh Fawzan says, following the desires is uh, extremely dangerous. Person should be aware of this by following his desires and doing whatever he wants to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed our noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of mankind. Still said to him, in Surah Sa'd, verse 26, وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْهَوَىٰ فَيُضِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَضِلُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ بِمَا نَسُوا يَوْمَ الْحِسَابِ Actually, this ayah, I made a mistake. It's a yani, mistake. Allah addressed his prophet Dawood, alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, actually, I make a correction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed in this ayah 26 of Surah Sa'd his prophet Dawood, alayhi salatu salam. Okay? Because he said the ayah began by, Ya Dawood, inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ard. فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْهَوَىٰ فَيُضِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Allah says, O Dawood, verily we have placed you as a successor on the earth. So judge you between men in truth and justice, and follow not your desire. For it, it will mislead you from the path of Allah. Verily those who wander astray from the path of Allah shall have a severe torment because they forgot the day of reckoning. So once again, that was uh, Nabiullah Dawood. He's the one that Allah has addressed in this verse. Sheikh Salih al Fawzan he says, Ibn al Jawzi rahimahullah has a, a book in one volume, huge volume, yani, uh, it's called Dhammul Hawa. He's mentioning that the follow and the desires is something that is blameworthy. And he mentioned, he said, in it, adilla, proofs, and statements of the Arab people of knowledge and uh, wise sayings, all of it warn against falling into this danger, which is following the desires. So what is incumbent upon a person to be aware of following his desires? He said, a person may, may not fall into worshipping idols or rocks or trees or graves, yeah, and person may know Tawheed, he knows Sunnah, however, he may have this problem. He may be following his desires. Whatever agreed with what he thinks is right, that's what he's going to follow. He said, this is a great calamity. So Muslims should be aware of this, following his desires, but rather, he should always train himself to follow that which he came from the Messenger of Allah, sallam, as he came in the Hadith. None of you complete Iman until his desires is based on what 
and he follows that which I came with. The Sheikh said the Messenger وسلم, did not leave anything from this matter of this religion except that he made it clear to them, to this Ummah. So much so that some of the companions say that ماتوا في رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وطائر يقلب جناحيه في الهواء إلا وذكر لنا منه علما The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم by the time when he died he has given us the knowledge of everything including even the bird when he flicks his wings in the sky Anything that humanity needs the Sheikh says the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم from the things, from the things that get them closer to Allah and keep them further away from disbelief, misguidance, except that the Prophet ﷺ has made it clear for them. As it came in a sound hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, إِنِّي تَارِكُمْ فِيكُمْ مَا إِن تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِهِ لَن تَضِلُّوا بَعْدِي كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّتِي Prophet ﷺ says, I'm living with you and amongst you, that which if you hold on firm to it, by acting upon it and put it to practice, you will never go astray after me, the book of Allah and my Sunnah. So the Shaykh says, Allah, the Prophet has left his Ummah upon the clear white path. It's nice, resemble its days. And once this religion was completed and perfected, and the, uh, Allah completed and perfected his favors upon the people, then the Prophet ﷺ died after conveying exactly what Allah has ordered him to convey and has made the Sunnah clear to his companions. That's why in the farewell sermon, this is Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, Prophet ﷺ, he says, he says to the companions, Have I not conveyed? قَالُوا نَشْهَدُ أَنَّكَ قَدْ بَلَّغْتَ وَنَصَحْتَ They said, we, t- we testify that you have conveyed in the, in the best way. فَقَالَ اللَّهُمَّ شَدِي said, O Allah, bear witness to their statements. As for the statement of Al-Imam Barbahari, وَهُمُ الْجَمَاعَ وَهُمُ السَّوَادُ الْأَعْظَمُ He says, as for his statement, he said, they are the jama'ah, and the main body. He said, his companions, Ridwanullahi alayhim, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu they are the jama'ah. They are the origin of the jama'ah that are upon the truth. They are the first jama'ah. And then whoever followed them upon that khair and upon that good, he is a part of the jama'ah that is upon the truth. Because the Prophet says in the hadith, as in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, from the hadith of Imran ibn Hussain, he says, خيركم قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم The best of you as my generation and those who come after them and those who come after them. Meaning the Sahaba are the best, that's the generation of the Prophet and then التابعون and أتباع التابعون These are the best generations. And they are the jama'ah. And whoever come after them and follow what they were upon, because he's following the origin, the asl, that was the companion they were upon. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayah, 100 of Surah Tawbah, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ Allah says the foremost to accept Islam. Who are they? The muhajirin. Those who made hijrah from Mecca to Medina. And the Ansar, they are the inhabitants of Medina, the Muslims who Allah guide their hearts to Iman, Islam, and Alhamdulillah, they open their homes and hearts for the believers who migrated to them. And Allah SWT says, and those who follow them exactly in what they were upon. These are the Jama'ah. These are the people that Allah has commanded us to be with them. Prophet ﷺ commanded us to be with them. And we were prohibited from forsaking what they were upon. And they are the great body that upon the truth, upon guidance. So therefore, 
and these are our predecessors. So therefore, he said, Sheikh said, for those who speak ill about the Salaf, will be the companions, Tabi'un, Atba'at Tabi'un, and they say now, it's not a big deal to follow them, they are only men, and we are men. And they say, it's okay to bring something that go along with our time, our era, and they say we are not you know, forced and compelled to follow them, to follow the Salaf or the statement of the Salaf. The Sheikh said, all of this is a clear misguidance. We seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because these people, they want to yani, disconnect this Ummah from their Asl, from their origin. He said, and that's what's going to bring nothing but destruction, ruin and destruction. And that's what they want. Those who they say, now you know how to follow the Salah. They far away. They don't understand what we're going through. They don't live in our lives, in our times. They want nothing to destroy this Ummah. And they brought this Hila, yani this trick, so that they can disconnect the the latter of this Ummah from the first of this Ummah. The Sheikh Rahavidullah said, Nam, in our times, yeah, there are people who warn against Madhab al Salaf. He warned the Muslims, he said, don't take the statements of Salaf. These people, their time has gone. It's of hundreds of years between us and them. Why do you want to take their statements? And he warned against that. Rather, he says, you have to be innovative. You know, you have to go along with your time, with your place and technology and this. The Sheikh said, look, the deen, the tawqifi, the religion, when you come to the religion, it is all from Allah. And what is upon us is to adhere and to leave off innovations. We have to follow. We are, we are followers of Quran and Sunnah and we are not innovators. Don't use your intellect when it comes to, by inventing principles. No, I mean, intellect to understand, but you don't use intellect to oppose the text, Quran or Sunnah. It's not permissible. The Sheikh says, you want Muslims want to be innovative? Yeah, be innovative in technology and industry. Be innovative. Come up with some new Technology, alhamdulillah, is going to help the people, inshallah ta'ala, make their life easy for them. In medicine, for example, in technology. No, nah, that's okay. But when it comes to the religion, there is no room for innovations. No one has the right to bring anything, to tamper with any of that which the Prophet has left. Once the Prophet died, the legislation came to an end, he says came to an end by the death of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is left for us? Al-Ittiba To follow, to adhere to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left the companions upon and it is not permissible for anyone to tamper with any of that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left for us. No one has the right to innovate or to introduce anything and therefore say Oh, this is now, this is go along with the time we live in, and this is better, you know, because we don't live in the time of the Sahaba and Tabi'een and Imam Ahmad and Hanbal and this and that. No. Imam Malik ta'ala used to say, nothing rectified the ma this Ummah except that which has rectified the first part of it. As this is a statement that was mentioned by Imam al-Shatib in Atisan ibn, ibn Abd al-Hadi, uh, he said, and the ulama, they mentioned Imam Malik, uh, as, a, as I heard Shaykh Ubaid, Hafidullah Ta'ala, more than once he says, he, used, he heard it from his Shaykh, Wahb ibn Kaysan. Imam Malik, Rahimah Ta'ala, as he himself says, like in Tamheed, in the book of Tamheed of Ibn Abd al-Bar, Imam Malik, Rahimah Ta'ala, says, that Wahb ibn Kaysan, he used to sit to teach us, and he never, whenever he finished a, a class, he will say this. Says, nothing will rectify the affairs of this matter except 
if you hold on firm to what's the first generation they were upon. What is that that the Indian Sheikh said? What is that that rectify the first generation, the Sahaba, the Book of Allah and the Sunnah? So therefore, nothing will rectify the this Ummah. Nothing will bring solutions to the many problems of this Ummah except Quran. If they go back to the Book of Allah and to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu following the guidance of As-Salaf Salih. As for his statement, was Sawad al Adam al Haqqu wa Ahlu, he said, as for his statement, the, 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 the main body is the truth and his people, he said, no, nah, they are the people of truth. And those who hold them firm to the, firm to the truth. He said, doesn't mean uh, any great number of people, it means the truth. Anyone who's upon the truth, even if they are few in number. If they are few in number, they are the majority. You see? They are the people that you want to be with. Even he said, if there is only one person actually. SubhanAllah. And we have examples, like for example, uh, Abu Nu'aym in his book Al Hilya, he mentioned that uh, a person asked Imam Ishaq ibn Rahuya, he said, Who is the the, the, the Sawad al Adam. He said, Muhammad ibn Aslam al Tosi, and those who follow him. They are the people who upon the truth, and they are the majority that you want to be with. Also, he mentioned that Ibn al Mubarak was asked also, Who are Abu Rahman? Who are the Sawad al Adam? He said, Abu Hamza al Sukkari. In that time, these are the people of Sunnah who were firm upon it in their time. He said, anyone who's hurled and firm to the truth, they are the jama'ah that you want to be with, regardless of their number. We hope, alhamdulillah, that they are upon, that they may be a great in number. But this is a trick that Ahlul Bid'ah, they use, tablighis, for example, ikhwanis. They tell their followers, look, oh, well, look, we have many masjids. Look in this area, there is 15 masjids. 13 of them is ours. So we are the upon the truth. That's why a person be discouraged who don't know the principles. When somebody introduce him to the people, Salafis who are upon the haqq and the truth, he'll go find a small message, few people, and he's like, no, you guys can't be upon the haqq. Well, you're only a few of you. It's not about the number. It's about what they are upon. If they are upon Quran, Sunnah, upon the understanding of Salaf al-Salih, these are the people you want to be with. The Sheikh says, by the way, great numbers, usually, they may be upon misguidance. Look what Allah SWT said in Surah Al-An'am. Hmm? Surah Al-An'am, verse 116. Allah, and, and, and pay attention to this, to this verse here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تُطِعْ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّوكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ إِنْ يَتَّبِعُونَ إِلَّا الظَّنَّ وَإِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَخْرُصُونَ And if you obey most of those on the earth, they will mislead you far away from Allah's path. They follow nothing but conjunctures. And they do not, and they do nothing but lie. Al-Yadu Billah. In Surah Yusuf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ وَلَوْ حَرَسْتَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ Most of men, even if you're diligent, they are not going to be believers. Also in Surah Al-A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Surah Al-A'raf, verse number 102, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hey <laughs> now, this is a Surah Al Namada, Surah Al Araf 102, inshallah ta'ala. Wama wajadna li akhtarihim min ahad, in wajadna akhtarahum la fasiqeen. And most of them we found not true to their covenant, but most of them we found indeed fasiqun, rebellious, disobedient to Allah. 
And this is sad reality in our times. SubhanAllah, most of the Muslims are ignorant of the Sunnah of Quran. They don't know much. They just follow whatever or somebody tell them and they go ahead and do it. Instead of asking questions, says, what do you are upon? Look at us, we have big masjid. We're the biggest masjid in the area, man. That's like some three millions. This masjid took us like a lot of money to build. It doesn't matter, man. We're not in the real estate. We want to make it to the Jannah. Okay? And what's going to get us to the Jannah is not a bigger masjid with big chandeliers. No, what's going to get us in the masjid? In Jannah is Quran and Sunnah upon the understanding of As-Salaam Salih. Also in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 49, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ لَفَاسِقُونَ Verily, most of the people of mankind are disobedient, and they're not obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, the Sheikh says, big numbers, they should not mislead you. Just because they have big number, they must be upon the haqq. Alhamdulillah, we hope and we ask Allah to increase people of Ahlul Sunnah. Those who adhere to the way of the Salaf Salih, may Allah increase them in number. But until then, don't be misled. Don't make this your priority. Oh, who has more number? Them, I'm with them. No, you're with the people who are upon the haqq. The great numbers, the Sheikh said, they are not followed unless if they are upon the truth. Just remember this principle now. Whoever is upon the truth, and the truth is what the Prophet was upon and left the companions upon. Not what Ahlul Bidah try to sell you like Jama'at Tabligh now, Sufis, Ikhwan Muslimin. Huh? They want to try to sell you that it is the truth. No, it's not. Whoever is upon the truth, they are the people you want to be with, even if they are few in number, if they are in large number, Alhamdulillah. But how would you know? Check, don't count them. Oh, 300, mashallah. 3,000? No way. Because some people, they said, somehow I just came from this masjid. They have like 700. He's like, what? We're going to move there. He didn't even ask a question what they are upon. Just because they tell you there are 700? In Jumu'ah, you want to move there? No, you're going to ask what they are upon first. Are they upon the truth or are they upon falsehood? If they are upon the truth, Alhamdulillah, they the Jama'ah. You can move and be with them, no problem. So this is the scale, man. This is the measuring stick, the truth. Anyone who's upon the truth, if they, even if they are few, even if it's one person, that's what you want to be with. But falsehood? Misguidance, stay away from it, run away from it, even if there is so many people are upon it. And then Imam Barbahai said, فَمَنْ خَالَفَ أَصْحَابَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فِي شَيْءٍ مِنْ أَمْرِ الدِّينِ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ He says, anyone who opposes, he who contradicts the companions of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم in any of the affairs of the religion, then he has fallen into disbelief. The Shaykh said this word here, he has fallen into disbelief, remember, it could be the major disbelief that takes a person out of Islam, or it could be the type of disbelief that does not take a person of Islam out of Islam, meaning minor disbelief. It's according to the violation of such a person. Uh, Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi, ta'ala, in his book, Al-Wajibat, is, is a nice book, alhamdulillah, that, that, was, that is available uh, and translated by our noble brother, Jamil Finch the obligatory matters that uh, every Muslim should know, and this explanation of Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi. And he mentioned in there that there is in a, in a chapter of, of, of disbelief of kufr, he says, likewise, kufr is two types. There is a kufr that takes person out of Islam, and there is a kufr that does not take person out of Islam. Kufr that does not take person out of Islam, and he said kufr ni'mah, to disbelieve in the favors and the blessings of Allah, and also the Prophet وسلم, he says, whoever swear by other than Allah has disbelieved. This is not a disbelief that take a person out of Islam. This is a minor disbelief. Likewise, he says, fighting a Muslim is a disbelief. But that's a, a minor disbelief. So the Sheikh, he says, it depends on the violation. So his statement here has disbelieved or fallen to disbelief. 
it's it's not always it mean that yeah he's a kafir like we know he's a disbeliever he's not a muslim anymore period no he said he may be based on what what he believed based on the violation itself it could be a disbelief that take him out of islam it could be a minor disbelief he said however opposing the salaf is a disbelief but it based on how that person opposed them he may oppose them in something that take him out of al-Islam, and he may oppose them in something that consider is a minor disbelief. But he said what uh, intended in here is that a person may oppose the Salaf at the first in, in things, small things, that does not take person of, of Islam. But if he continue upon that, continue to oppose the Salaf, it may slowly may lead him to leave the, the religion Billah, and therefore he become a disbeliever. Especially now he's, he's making fun of what the companions are upon. That's a major sin Billah, making fun of Sunnah or something. So he will exit from the deen. He said, look, the tricks of the shaitan, he will take him slowly but surely Billah, to follow his desires to follow his nafs that are called to evil until he leaves the religion and by this we come to the end of this uh, point inshallah ta'ala before we leave uh, I received a question somebody asked it's not relevant to the topic but it, it, it has to deal with the insurance he says can you is insurance what is the ruling of having insurance on cars insurance on cars the ulama Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin Sheikh Al-Albani and the ulama of Ahl sunnah they say that insurance is haram insurance whether it be on cars or on on, on, on houses or whatever is haram the insurance itself is haram why? Because it is built on gharar, on gambling. And Shaykh al Uthaymin, he explained it. He says, because when a person, for example, give $100, for example, every month, for a whole year, nothing happened to his car, that company doesn't give him a dime. They don't give him nothing. So, they, they took his money. And remember, if a million people like him, or... 10 million they don't insure and these people they get very rich by devouring the wealth of others likewise you find this person he gave a, like a hundred dollars first month he just gave them a payment he got in a car accident he totaled his car now the insurance is gonna pay him twenty five thousand dollars to get another car that twenty five thousand where did he come from hmm? It's not, it's not right for him. He just gave a hundred to get twenty-five. Anyway, they say that's not permissible. However, in, if if you leave the ulama, they mention if you live in a, in a, in a country and uh, insurance, car insurance is obligatory, and if you drive without insurance, you get yourself in trouble. Then in this case, if you need a car, if you don't need a car, don't get it. But if you really need a car, and that's a necessity, and you cannot do without, then in this case, you take insurance, and the sin is upon those people who make it obligatory. However, take only the liability, the, the minimum, the minimum required by the law. Don't go for full coverage and this and that. Go for the, the lowest and the bare minimum, only so that you don't get in trouble. And if you find any way to get away from insurance that they says, oh, you don't have to in some states or where you live, alhamdulillah, that's what you want to do. Wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira.